All right, thanks for watching. And today, just like on the Mean Girls, we will show that the limit does not exist. So how would you show that a certain limit doesn't exist? Let's illustrate it with the case minus one to the n. So show that the limit as n goes to infinity of minus one to the n doesn't exist. Which by the way, it should make sense because minus one to the n just jumps back and forth between minus one and one. In some sense, it doesn't really make up its mind. And the way you show that the limit doesn't exist is basically by contradiction. Because uh, it's a good example. So in other words, you should suppose that the limit exists and you find some sort of a contradiction. So suppose, in particular, that the limit as n goes to infinity of minus 1 to the n equals s. And what does that mean? It has to do with errors. So let epsilon be some value that's to be announced. So the book tells you what the value is, but I don't like it because I want you to discover what it is. So let epsilon be to be announced. Then there is some threshold and uh, such that If um, n is bigger than that threshold, so once you pass that threshold, then what you get is uh, Sn minus S is less than epsilon, which means uh, in this case, absolute value of minus one to the n minus S is less than epsilon. And what we would like to do, we would like to explore this equation to find some information about s. Now, notice this thing is true for all n bigger than that threshold. In particular, it is true for all even values bigger than that threshold. So if n is even, then what do we get? we get minus one to an even power, minus s is less than epsilon, so indeed, this just becomes one. So one minus s is less than epsilon, and this implies s minus one is less than epsilon, and we get a very nice bound for s. So this just tells you that s minus one, It's squeezed between minus epsilon and epsilon. So in particular, S is very close to one. So S is between one minus epsilon and epsilon. So that is one piece of information you get from this, that S is close to one. And now what we wanna show similarly is that S is close to minus one. Now if N is odd, then what we get, this becomes minus one, minus s is less than epsilon, and that's the same thing as saying s plus one is less than epsilon, because it's minus s plus one, and we're taking absolute values. So s plus one is between minus epsilon and epsilon, in particular what we have is s is between minus one minus epsilon and minus one plus epsilon. So we have two things. On the one hand, s is close to one, and the other hand, s is close to minus one. And now what we wanna do, we wanna pick a very smart value for epsilon to actually give us a contradiction. Because again, what do we have? We have this. On the one hand, we know S is between one plus epsilon and one minus epsilon. It's one plus epsilon, one minus epsilon. And on the other hand, we have S is between, what was it? Minus one plus epsilon 
and minus 1 minus epsilon. And so all you need to do, you just need to choose epsilon so small such that this number is less than this number. Because then we simply get s is less than this, is less than this, is less than s. And that's our contradiction. So remember again, epsilon was 3b announced. So now choose epsilon such that minus 1 plus epsilon is less than or equal to 1 minus epsilon. And uh, I guess I should emphasize epsilon has to be positive. So for example, epsilon equals 1 works. But there are many other choices for epsilon. In fact, anything less than or equal 1 works. Uh, so the book just tells you this works, but really I want to emphasize any value works. Then what we get, on the one hand, we know s is less than minus 1 plus epsilon. That's by this last equality I raised. Now we know this thing is less than or equal to this thing. And lastly, we also know by the very first inequality that s is bigger than 1 minus epsilon. So in the end, if you combine this, you get s is strictly less than s, and that's a contradiction. Contradiction with what? With the limit existing, and therefore uh, the limit doesn't exist. Here we choose n even and n odd, but essentially you just choose n, which gives us all the possible limits there are, like here, minus 1 and 1. All right, thank you very much.